Welcome back, Eli. Yeah, it's good to have you here, man. We don't get to see Eli enough any, anymore or these days. Anyways. It always feels like an extra special occasion. I it, know, right? It's 100% an extra special occasion. <laughs> <laughs> Treated as such. Yeah. yeah. Eli from A4A2 Media in the house. He's the dude that makes all the magic happen. Um, we just talk and fuck shit up and <laughs> Eli fixes it all for us. <laughs> makes us look pretty and sound good most of the time. Sometimes you, makes you look there's nothing that can be done. Sometimes yeah. there's nothing that can be done. It's disaster, but he really does his best and does a great job. So welcome back to the uh, studio, Eli. It's funny you just asked. We're talking. We're going to talk about meal preps today, but you were talking about airline food and the stuff that's been going on with the airlines. It's a hot topic right now. It's like it kind now, of just caught wind like a couple days ago. It's so yeah. well. It's it's not funny, but it kind of is. Like the news media is now latched on to this. Um, I say news media, maybe that's um, the dirty word. Yeah, maybe that's, oh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. Maybe it, it, it's repetitive or redundant. Sorry. Oh, news. The airlines. So it started with the, the plane coming, or the, sorry, the door coming off the Alaskan Airlines flight. I think that's what you were thinking of, CC. Yeah. Remember oh, that? That was probably yeah. a couple months back. Yeah, okay. yeah, that was a little bit ago. Yeah, so the plane takes off, it's flying, and the freaking door flies off. And so... They make it back. They make it down. A few, yeah. few people have some bloody noses, I think. So maybe somebody took something to the head. But in the, the reality of it is really nobody got hurt. Yeah, obviously, that's disastrous. They were, yeah, they were close enough to the ground that, yeah, obviously that happens higher in the sky. And it's like a movie. It's like, <laughs> well, that's the thing. So like for me, like I grew up watching movies. Like yeah. <laughs> it was either Airplane, the comedy, right? With Leslie Nielsen for anybody that knows who that is, which was, there's, I think there were two and they were hilarious and way in front of their time. Classics, yeah. Yeah, sort of like some of the Mel Brooks movies. Like, you mm -hmm. couldn't do those movies now. Like, yeah. it would be too, <laughs> too offensive. Oh, way too <laughs> offensive. The woke world yeah. would just not stand for that stuff. But I, I encourage anybody to go back and watch Airplanes. Great. Um, and they leave they leave nobody out. Everybody gets made fun of, you know. <laughs> Equal opportunity. Uh, 100%. Or the other one of it was would like be the airplane disaster movies. And if you believe what you saw in the movies, like if a door comes off, <laughs> you're instantly sucked out. I mean, so, yeah, depressurized and yeah, I mean, shit hits your the fan. eyeballs get sucked out. Yeah, of your you're head. hanging on the edge of the plane as yeah, you're getting awful. swept away. Yeah. So when I see this stuff come up, I'm like, Jesus. But apparently, it's not so bad. I mean, wheels can fall off the plane, <laughs> or the hydraulic system can completely shut down, and planes can somehow safely land. Um, they're playing a lot of the um, the air traffic control uh, like audio, yeah, and... audio. So you get to hear it in the the back and forth. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> That's probably pretty entertaining. Uh, it, so going back as a kid, again, growing up watching these airplane movies, like that was part of the thing. Like, I won't go through all the lines, but if anybody that's seen those movies knows the ridiculousness that goes back and forth uh, on there, so listening to it, it's 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 a little harrowing. But yeah, man, these planes keep falling out of the. They're not mm. literally falling out of the sky, but the stuff is falling off of them. Falling apart. Falling well, apart. let's just hope that doesn't happen yeah. um, in two days. That's crazy. I'm <laughs> jumping. On, I'll be on like three planes and three or four planes in as many days. I'm so. sure you'll get the good ones though. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure Boeing, Boeing's really, really taking care of business right now. Um, what I'm, it's bringing, you know, why I brought that up, I don't really know. It's just funny that we were kind of talking about it. The, the disaster that you think will happen um, and all the prep work that they go into doing for this shit, like think about all the inspections and all the things that they do. The fact that we don't have more of these things is probably quite mysterious, or maybe there always have been. We just didn't know about them since the media's latched onto this. I don't really know, but, uh, but planning and, you know, the checks and balances and, mm -hmm. you know, all the people in the process and in the system, um, to get it done so that people don't die. Uh, Lives are at stake. Yeah, you beat me to it. And the trust that you will put in to that, like you just said, like I, I mindlessly bought plane tickets uh, for this, tri this trips I'm taking in the, over the next eight or nine days or whatever it is. And you know, you just you show up and you know you don't even think about it. I don't think about it. Some people do. I don't. Mm -hmm. um, but the the it's like you're choosing. It's like this is my solution. Like I just go online. I just put my credit card number in, and you know choose my time and date and problem solved. I get to where I need to go. There you go. Until Just like that. Until wheels fall off and uh doors fly off. <laughs> do doors fly off and <laughs> wheels wheels fly off. Anyway, I wanted to get into uh the the prepping and of of meals because mm -hmm. this has kind of come up as as I've been out 
chatting with people. The rain stopped here in California, seemingly for now. The sun has come out. It's gotten a little warmer. And all of a sudden, as per usual, people are like, dude. Concerned. Yeah, concerned. So how do I get rid of that? How do I get rid of this? So you guys do meal plans down there? (laughs) Meal plans. Meal plans. Of course. I literally got that one the other day. And I'm like, well, in a sense, yes. But that's not really what not the way you're thinking. Not the way you're thinking of. So then it gets into this conversation about like, oh yeah, I used to do this meal prep thing and it worked for me really well. Okay, what worked for you? What are we talking about here? And we're in some of these conversations just got into, you know, I was buying, I was having these meals delivered to my door. Um, this actually comes, it's interesting. I, was, I posted a picture in my Instagram stories about the meat counter where we get our meat and it went wild. Like people were like, where is this? Where can I go? I'm like, <laughs> It's the Italian market that's right down the street. Like we have, there's three of them here in town or whatever. And uh, shout out to Zanato's. I think they do a great job. But the Zanato's markets. But the the point of that was, is like people don't, they're not, the stuff is right there and it's right under their nose and they can go get this great food or whatever, but they're, they're not doing it. Right. And they're, they're not going out and shopping and they're not buying. And I recognize there are challenges in people's schedules and things like that to get things done, but they've chosen a meal prep company to basically be sort of their solution to their dietary success. Just eat these and I'll get where I'm trying to go. And guess what? That works until it doesn't. Uh, and like a lot of things in sort of health and fitness and and I'm, I have no problem with meal prep companies. I think they're great. Uh, we have a lot of great ones around us, actually. And I think a lot of people would be surprised to find out how many meal prep companies they might have right under their nose. They've, they've exploded, I would say, in the last like five years. Yeah. The variety has increased exponentially. Tons. And so I wanted <laughs> to talk about maybe at a higher level, like the pros and cons of uh, getting involved in like a in meal prep companies. And I think there's a couple of different ways we could categorize those. The who it might work best for, who maybe it's not for when to do it, like do you do this all the time, some of the time, never, that kind of a thing. And then again, some other considerations if you decide to go down that route uh, with may, what may or may not help you or be helpful for you in terms of the, in terms of achieving your goal, whatever that is. Um, but anyway, so mm-hmm. that, that's, that's the topic for today. And so, you know, Stephen and I were kind of talking about it, just going, hey, you know, like we don't, going back to like, do you do meal plans down there? Mm-hmm. Meal planning is a, is a kind of become a, like a dirty term, like in the nutrition coaching business. Yeah. Uh, because what I think what a lot of people think of meal planning, they think of like a template. Yes. Right. And, and those are still being sold. Yeah. You know, I think of, yeah. Eat, eat this for breakfast, eat this for lunch, eat this for dinner, a step-by-step instruction to how, how you eat now. Here you go. I'm assigning how you eat now. Yeah. And 90% of the time that is for the goal of two things. One is uh, weight loss and the second is fat loss. So those don't necessarily happen at the same time for people, but people are generally trying to find a meal plan or a meal plan program in order to lose weight. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not, I didn't choose a meal plan because I want to eat healthier. That's usually a secondary, third, you know, yeah. tertiary type of thing. It's an important point to make. Yeah, it, 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 Very much so. And so I think a lot of this came from the bodybuilding world because there is a formula mm-hmm. uh, to getting very, very lean, shredded, contest prep ready. It's really not that hard. Uh, from a, you know, from like a, um, a formula perspective to figure this out. Now, executing it is a whole different thing. That's a different thing. Yeah. That is a very, very different thing. And so then that got, that gets adopted by the general public or somebody that's looking to lose body fat and look better in their swimsuit. And then it gets kind of bastardized and then turns into all kinds of weird things. But those, those meal plans work to a certain extent. There's a lot of flaws with them. Yeah. Good work temporarily for some people. Yeah, because we're reducing ca- calories. Like these big bodybuilders that are already weighing 280, 300 pounds, right? Mm-hmm. They have a bunch of weight to lose, but also have a bunch of muscle to work with mm-hmm. underneath all that, that are eating a ton of calories already, right? In order to to build and maintain what they currently have pre-prep, then go into a prep and they go into a caloric deficit where they're eating very lean, very high protein. They're fluctuating their carbohydrate and whatever. And guess what happens? They lose weight quick, yeah. Yeah. And they look fucking fantastic. And who doesn't want that? Sign me up, dude. Right. Not taking into account any of the metabolic adaptation that a a new person 
coming into this or somebody that isn't as well trained, that isn't as experienced, don't have that nearly the same leverage, don't have close to it. Yeah. And so they adopt the same meal plan. They go into a deficit, mm-hmm. right? And they wind up in a, in that deeper hole that we've, we've talked about so many times. So anyway, just going to the meal prep thing, I think going, I think a lot of the meal planning uh, or meal plans came from that kind of world. And it's super easy to sell, right? Mm-hmm. Like very easy to sell. you write a template. Here's your 1100 to 1300 calorie meal plan template, right? Mm-hmm. Here's your 1300 to 1500 calorie meal plan template and so on and so on and so on and so forth. So whatever somebody would want to, you know, again, if somebody wants to purchase one of those, you just sell them the most appropriate one based on some dirty math that you might do. You <laughs> hand it to them, just eat like this and yeah, you know, just, yeah. you'll yeah, get yeah. shredded. Yeah, eat these foods. E- eat what we provided, and according to this, yeah, uh, to according to these instructions, because that's how life works, right? And just nice, neat instructions. Nothing outside ever affects your ability to execute on that template. Not once. No, has no. that ever happened to me? <laughs> no, no, ever. It's, it goes it goes as planned every single time. Yeah, nothing so. ever intervenes in that perfect scheduled eating. So I will tell you like one of the things, cause I was a, a, a consumer of meal plan templates when I first started with, you know, long, long time ago. So what I did, I, for those people that don't know, I got into coaching by hiring a coach, uh, you know, the, on the workout side of things, I felt pretty confident and I'd done a lot of work on the nutrition side of things. I thought I knew but I needed a lot of help. And so I hired somebody who was a bodybuilder um, and very sharp, very smart to kind of walk me through this process. And of course I got a meal plan template. You need to begin eating like this. And it looked like you might expect oatmeal, (laughs) eggs, and egg whites, right? Then there was a protein shake, right? And then there was quote unquote protein shake, which may have had some fruit in it and, you know, and protein powder, right? And then it was chicken, rice, and broccoli, (laughs) right? And then it was another protein shake. And then it was chicken, rice, and or salmon and rice and broccoli or green beans or something like that. And then another one of those. And look, that it worked, you know, from with regard to me doing what I wanted to do, which was to lean up and maintain the muscle that I had to ultimately get me ready for a show, right? The hardest part of that was the constant buying, cl- prepping, cooking, and then actually getting the food down, right? Because there were so many calories I was trying to consume. There was just a lot of work. Now, this won't be a surprise to a lot of people. People are like, yeah, that's the toughest part. The toughest part is doing all the cooking and the stuff, but it was keeping up with it. So it didn't matter what kind of a template I had or plan I had in front of me. The real challenge was 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 the execution. Well, yeah, it was actually executing on it. So. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that, that approach, you know, and yeah, you've touched on it, that approach I think works well in like the bodybuilding or physique community. I think there's a certain level of like head down, follow the plan, mm-hmm. um, and a certain level of commitment that someone makes going into something like that. Um, I think for whatever reason, it's kind of funny. People seem more ready to commit to something like extreme like that than something that's actually sustainable. Um, what do you mean? As, as far as, I mean, in my experience, when it was, uh, you know, working on the supplement side of things, the, you know, the bodybuilding client, their coach would send them to me for their supplement stack. And it was, okay, I'm supposed to buy one, two, three, four, five. Give me these ones. I pick them off the shelf. I put them in front of them. That'll be $400, please. Okay, bye. Versus somebody else, I have to sell them on a multivitamin. I have to haggle with them over a $25 multivitamin. Right. So there was this, there was this, um, you know, coach says jump, client says how high mentality. And that would be from people that you might not expect, you know, that, you know, they don't, they don't have like hardcore discipline in their background, but all of a sudden, for whatever reason, they decided they're going to do a bodybuilding or a physique show. And now it's like, I will do whatever it takes. I will eat mm-hmm. down to the gram what I'm told. I will empty my pocket <laughs> for all of these supplements, I don't even understand what they're doing, but I'm just, my coach told me to buy these. So here I am buying them. That was just the attitude that I would see. But then, yeah, you have to wrestle with someone to do something that's much more manageable and sustainable. Right. And a lot less like expensive. Just <laughs> small little changes versus a wholesale lifestyle shift. Yeah. It's interesting. That's a really good point. Uh, I guess I experienced that too. And I was probably one of those guys for a while. Yeah. You know, I was always, I, I to be 
clear though, I was always researching and I wanted to know the answers. I was a nerd like that, like give me the answers, but you know, the list of supplements made sense. This is this for this, this is for that. This is what you're training this hard. You need this for recovery, all that kind of stuff. So it makes sense to me, but I did sell those things to people that really had no idea what they were buying yeah. <laughs> um, and didn't really care as long as the dream that they had when they, when they mm -hmm. left after writing me a check or getting me their credit card was fulfilled. And that was yeah. the dream of looking, feeling, and being fit in, yeah. in whatever way that they, because that's all they got sold at the end, mm -hmm. right? What happened after that was, is up to the coach and up to the, you know, and up to the client in terms of what they, what they're able to manage and execute together. But it's a, it's a very good point. It's why are we, why are we doing that? It's it, it, at some level, it's kind of the easy button. It's mm -hmm. also, I think that button gets hit like when this specifically to the meal prep uh, stuff is that button gets hit when they're just so frustrated, when they know what they need to do and they just can't seem to get it done. That it can be, be very overwhelming. A hundred percent. So yeah, I can totally see it being the easy button for certain individuals. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. They're so frustrated. They're like, okay, like, yeah, let me just, I'll just follow this. I'll follow it to a T. You're telling me if I follow it to a T, I'll get where I want to be. I'm tired of thinking about it. Let me just, I'm just going to do what I'm told. Yeah. The problem is the failure rate with that. Yeah. And, and yeah the they don't end up, is very low. They, they think they're going to do what they're told and then life happens. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's the challenge and that's where like meal prep comes in. Right. So this will take, this will give me time back. Right. So I spend a fraction of the time, maybe ordering this stuff online and having it sent to my door or whatever else, or, you know, on, on my computer or my phone or whatever. So I don't have to worry about the, the, um, sorry, the shopping, the, pre the, the prepping, the cleaning, you know, and all that stuff. I don't even have to think about that. Uh, that's a huge up, upside to this, right? Okay. You're, you're 100% right. Uh, that, that will do that. Also, I hate cooking or hmm. three, I'm a terrible cook. Yeah, I suck at it. Yeah. I, I am <laughs> awful at it. I can't it. eat my own food. Yet. <laughs> yeah, I can't eat my own food and I need somebody to do all this. Like I can't cook vegetables or, you know, like I really like chicken, but I, I, you know, I cook the hell out of it every time. I, it always tastes better when somebody else, I, I do, I get that. And I think that's a really, that's a, an upside to, to meal prep. Another thing to think about is like, I like cooking. I just don't like doing all the shopping. Right. And, you know, and, and putting all the ingredients together, it's too much work. But so you, but if somebody sends me all the ingredients, mm -hmm. right. And it's easily, it's there. A lot of that work is taken out of it. Yeah, like follow the instructions and execute. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I enjoy standing in the kitchen, maybe, you know, being social or watching my Netflix while I'm cooking or whatever. And being Have in my the, glass of wine, my, whatever. <laughs> right. Um, and it, it, in some cases it makes me feel better because it isn't coming like plastic wrapped in a million different, you know, containers, which th there ends up being like a lot of waste when you order some of these meal preps. So, you know, I'm trying to be environmentally friendly. It comes in these paper bags or these boxes or whatever, and it's easy, right? Yeah. But it also helps me feel better about this feels a little fresh mm -hmm. or a little fresher. It feels a little less processed and I'm controlling what's going into the pan or what's going into my bowl or what's yeah. going on to yeah. my plate. And I think that's, that's an important thing. I've used those myself. Yep. Like, yeah. I've used, I used a subscription service very much like that because yeah, it wasn't the cooking aspect of it. It was the time spent grocery shopping because mm -hmm. for whatever reason, for me, if I'm planning, like planning a whole week of meals and doing that grocery run in one sitting is like overwhelming for me. I'm like, I have no idea if I'm even going to be alive in five days. I don't know what I'm going to eat. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> right. So, uh, but that leads to going to the grocery store over and over and over again, which is time consuming. That, but then also sometimes, you know, those meal prep services, they'll give you all the ingredients that you need in the right servings or the right amount. So then mm -hmm. you don't have to go to the grocery store and you don't have to find this random ingredient that you're probably mm -hmm. only going to use for that one dish and you're not mm -hmm. going to use it again yeah. for several weeks or maybe months later. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to buy the whole, yeah, spice mm -hmm. uh, bottle or whatever. You just get enough one serving because, yeah, how often am I using like saffron or something in, right. my, in yeah. my cooking? So if you're doing that, obviously there's some amount of prep that goes into that, but very little, but you're still cleaning, right? Mm -hmm. And it's still not ready to go. So if like, I can't take my ready to cook meal with me to work the next day, unless I do the cooking, mm -hmm. right? Or, you know, I can't pack it all up and take it with me, much like a lot of these pre-made meal preps are, like they come ready to go. All you've got to do is heat them up. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that takes it to the next level of convenience with regard to how quickly you can get it into your, get it into your, out of your refrigerator, into your bag, on the road, into a microwave or an oven if you're heating it up that way. 
and slamming it down and then just throwing away your plastic waste, you know, your paper waste, whatever it's, whatever it's coming and you're, you're on to the next thing. Yeah. No cleaning, no prepping. Yeah. Something no to be said for this. Portable. Something to be said for this. So those are kind of your two different like pre, like uh, prep, meal prep type things. And I've, I've, uh, we played around with a few of those. One of my parents actually do some of the pre-made or the, the yeah, pre-prepped yeah, like stuff. A, a meal kit versus mm-hmm. a meal prep. Yeah, and, and I talked to my mom about it who loves cooking and she's an mm-hmm. amazing cook um, and really enjoys cooking and the whole mm-hmm. process of doing it. Uh, she's like, just, you know, sometimes I just don't know what to cook. You know, yeah. like I, we're just bored. You know, we kind of do revert yeah. to the same thing as I'm just looking for something different. So she'll just hit a couple of buttons you know, submitted a, a couple of numbers from a credit card and the next thing you know, they have something new. Yeah. Which ends up being a lot less expensive uh, than going out to dinner, mm-hmm. right? And and trying to do that that way. However, they do do that on occasion, but not, mm-hmm. not typically. So sometimes it's just a matter of just changing it up. Yeah. So if you kind of look at like all of those things, I've talked to a lot of people that have done those things and had quote unquote success with each of them. It, and invariably, that's what they're telling me. They're telling me about their past success, not their current success with what's going on there almost every time. Now, that's not true with everybody. There are some people that do this regularly. And I can tell you the type that does really well on this meal. Pre- Let's talk about the pre-prepped. Um, uh, like the pre-made meals? Pre-made meals, right? So they're, co- go, yeah. they're coming ready to eat. So the person that that works generally works very good for is the person that's number one, using those for only a couple of meals per day. They're not using them for every meal per day. Mm -hmm. And they understand, you know, the meals that they need to use those for. They're, they're filling their day, but there's their dinner and their breakfast is still eaten at home. And they're, so there's, there's that. They're not doing it for every meal. They're doing it for a couple of meals. Two, these people are generally single, Right. Or uh, don't have any kids in the house. So they may be in a relationship. Maybe they don't have, like that person doesn't live with them. Maybe they do, uh, but they had they don't have kids in the house. So they're, this is the general person that I talk to. I'm not saying this is everybody. And then I think the other interesting thing there is, is what I see is a lot of times this is a person that's like, has shift work. So they know exactly where they're going to be at all times. And they're already working like, the typical whatever it might be, nine to five, but there's almost always very uh, like overtime in these people's shifts. They're they're having a tough time getting like their workouts done. They work can be unpredictable as as set as the schedule is. It can be very un- unpredictable, and it's at odd times during the day. Like they they work a weird shift, like a mid shift or a, a swing shift or a midnight shift. I find that these things work really well, or the people that are being fairly successful are kind of are are, are playing in that. In those, in those categories. The meal preps are more adaptable for somebody who, yeah, has a little bit of unpredictability in their schedule or they don't have a, a traditional schedule. Yeah. And they're, they're not, they don't have to worry about anybody else. Like yeah. Luis, mm-hmm. not to worry about sitting down to meal time with anybody else. Like uh, in, the in, whole, the whole family, a meal prep each for everybody yeah, around the table. I've seen, <laughs> I've seen people throw up their hands and just be like, look, this is what we need to do. And it fails miserably almost every time because <laughs> you're trying to make everybody happy with mm-hmm. a very generic plan. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, 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 and it fails. Nobody, you're never going to make all the people happy all the time. So something to consider if this is something you're thinking about doing is like, where do these fit in for me? Um, the, the, the prepped, sorry, the, what's the word I'm looking for here? Like the, the, the ready or the, the prep and ready to cook yeah, the meal, meals. Meal kit is what I've yeah, always meal refer, kit. Yeah. Okay. So that's really, house, okay. Yeah. So let's look at it. Let's call that a meal kit. So that meal kit, I, t- I, I see work well for families or work well mm-hmm. for like the working couples that are kind of jamming from the time the alarm clock goes off in the morning till dinner time, but they want to sit down or have their time at home or do have the time at home to cook that one meal in that sense. But that's not necessarily what's going on the rest of the day. Mm-hmm. Like each person or that person is kind of doing you know, their, own thing. their own thing throughout the day. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's generally very like consistent on those for the, for those people, whatever that happens to be. But that the one meal at the end of the day is really the most control they have in their mm-hmm. weekly, let's just say, plan, mm-hmm. which we need to come back to, uh, it's that 
we know what we're getting here. That was the one we've already thought of. We picked it out at the beginning of the week. Mm-hmm. We're having all of these, you know, five days with the meals sent in. We know what we're going to have. It's already, it's already yeah. decided. Grocery shopping doesn't have to get done. Yeah. But the other meals during that day generally aren't very well planned. And it's just mm-hmm. kind of like whatever's around or one of those people is much more regimented, let's just say, than the other people if you're talking about like a, a couple's type of dynamic. Anyway, so that's that's kind of what I've I've seen kind of in general. I don't I don't mm. know about you guys. Yeah. I mean, as far as, yeah, I've, I've had experience with my clients using both. And I think, you know, you covered a, a few important things. The meal kit is going to be uh, a better fit for somebody who, you know, does enjoy cooking, um, but maybe doesn't quite have the time to gather the ingredients or, you know, I've been, you know, uh, like you mentioned, uh, your mom, you know, just wanting something different. Like, I don't know what to cook. I think that I've heard that quite a few times from clients as well. Like, well, yeah, I don't mind cooking, but I don't know what to cook. Um, so that's where those meal kits could work very well. The The meal preps, yeah, those I would say I've seen work better for people who are maybe a little less picky. Number one, yep. Um, let's be honest; it works a little better for like a bro um, who's you know eating for gains than uh, someone who is uh, you know a little more picky about what they're eating. Yeah, in all fairness, I know I know several females like that too. Like they're just not that concerned with it. It's like yeah, 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 this the, is, yeah it goes food, both ways. Food is yeah. fuel. fuel. Yeah. yeah, and I'm not. I'm just saying that. But yes, that type, and I think everybody knows that type. Like it doesn't really matter. It's I need eight ounces of ground. Turkey, you know, yeah, they, they don't care of, eating chicken, broccoli, rice every, every meal. Does, yeah, it doesn't doesn't matter to them. So, as someone who's looking for some variety, doesn't tend to work very well. And um, I think, uh, yeah, the family consideration that's also part of it. We we don't sit around uh, the dinner table with each of our individual little Tupperwares. Um, that that doesn't <laughs> usually work very well, especially with kids. So, um, maybe for like working professionals, using the the meal prep, the pre prep as lunch. Mm-hmm. I think that would be where I've seen it be most successful because that's often the meal where people have the least control throughout the day. It's like the most variable meal in my, in my experience uh, with folks that I've worked with. So they, they probably eat breakfast at home or have something small that they have a little more control over. They eat dinner at home, again, more controlled environment, but then lunch can be like wild, wild west. I don't know, yep. you know, I don't know when I'm going to eat lunch. I have a meeting come up or I, you know, mm-hmm. I'm all over the place. I forget to eat and I need something, you know, before the next meeting, that kind of thing. So that's where I've seen it be successful. Yeah. The other part I've seen or place I've seen these things be successful. If you know you're traveling and Mm -hmm. you're going, you're, you're, Mm -hmm. you're, you're just out of your schedule, out of your regular routine and whatever is people will buy these things and they will take them yeah, with them. The portability is. Yeah. It's very, it's very cool. I don't, I don't have to think about it and it's very easily heated up. Um, most hotel rooms have microwaves in them these days. You can easily do it there. Or if you're on the road, you know, uh, pop into, you know, a convenience store or whatever and throw it in the microwave if you're trying to do it there. All those, those kind of, I've seen it work well for people that are on the road pretty regularly. Mm -hmm. Or again, like we talk, you know, first responders quite a bit, specifically like, um, people that are on, uh, riding on an ambulance, you know, all day, like paramedics or, or EMTs and police officers that are in their cars kind of constantly all day, they know where to go to, to pop in a meal and, and heat it up. But again, these are people that are very regimented and more importantly, I think um, the people that do the best are the people that are actually on a plan that didn't just choose the, or they're, they're executing a larger plan. Yeah. The plan wasn't, oh, meal prep is- Eat, the, eat these meals. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Order these meals and my problem is solved. Yeah. With what no is the actual template of macros? Or what calories, is the yeah. problem? Yeah. Or what is it that we're trying to get done here? And and so again, anybody that's on these things or on like regular meal prep type services that have been very successful that I've tend to be tend to be around or or uh, or work with in the past are people that are very in tune with what they need to be doing. So macros are important to them, right? Total caloric intake is important to them. Um, and, and that's usually one of the bigger ones is just uh, how do I get it all in during the day? If it's there and ready for me to eat, like I'll even eat it cold. I don't care. One less thing to think about. It's, Mm -hmm. I just need to get it in. Uh, and if that's not you, like if you're not that person, then maybe it fits in here somehow. But if you're choosing that as your main, um, delivery system and that in your, your dietary success is dependent on the meal prep and the meal prep company, um, I would be very cautious of this. I think there's some pitfalls there. Yeah. You need, you need to go into it. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a meal prep, not a meal plan. That makes sense. The meal preps themselves. That's, that's not a plan. That's not just, 
you know, I think that, that we've, you know, throughout the years, there's been these type of weight loss programs like yep. eat our meals, lose weight. Like that's all you have to know. Just Weight eat, Watchers. Just eat these. Jenny Craig. Yeah. yeah. The, the, all the thinking is taken out of it for you. You don't have to count calories. Just consume these meals and you will get the results you're Ridiculous. looking for. Which, yeah, is, I mean, from, to me, that sounds kind of crazy going into something without understanding the fundamentals of how this even works. Like someone just telling you, well, just do this and you'll get that. That goes like, back to what you're saying about the supplement shop and the $400 of yeah. supplements. Like, yeah, just like, give me your money and- yeah, there you go. Expect that this is what's going to yeah, happen. Yeah, put these down your pie hole and you'll be jacked. Like it's without, yeah, without even knowing like, what is this for? Why am I taking this? What is the purpose behind what I'm doing? Well, it's um, all about like sustainability in the mm -hmm. end because you can do this temporarily, but then when it's taken away or life happens and, you know, S something happens in your day or your week or whatever, and it throws you off your game, then what are you going to do? Right. You have no intuition. Like, yeah, yeah, no intuition or any skills as mm -hmm. far as to be able to put forth, to be able to make that next meal for you or to make that decision as far as what are you going to eat if you're out somewhere, yeah, you know? That that skills piece is actually a really good point. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of going back to the people I've seen be very successful in this. I mean, we've talked, I, I know a lot of guys that play in the world of physique that are also professionals, right? And they, they do other things. They know what to do. And they've mm -hmm. done this in the past and they've discovered that it takes me way too much time to mm -hmm. go to the store, do all the things, plus try to, you know, get to work, get all my workouts done, have a life, have relationships, all that other stuff. So I've chosen to, you know, I've chosen meal prep as my to solution. Strategically, as yes. a tool to use when I need to plug a gap. But they know how to do it and they yeah. did it for a while to get to the point where they where they now know this is the right plan for me. And I don't do this maybe seven days a week. I might do it five. And on the weekends, I have more control. I, I do things, you know, more independently of that. Of that. Or, and I plan for that. Like, mm -hmm. I know I'm going to have a little bit of a tougher time or I'm going to eat more. Or I'm going to eat less or whatever else, whatever else. It didn't start with meal prep. It started way before that. It started with understanding their needs from the beginning before they were like, okay, well, this is a tool that helps me meet those needs versus going into it not really understanding your needs, but just blindly following. Well, I think if I eat these, these are like more healthy or something. So I'll be healthier after that. Yeah. I, I think the things that go in, we just talk about the things that go into that, obviously, or I, well, I was alluded to those earlier, but understanding what your total caloric, or total caloric need is, and then what do you need to get from a macronutrient profile in order to fulfill the, the caloric need. And then I guess if you're looking at this in the larger picture, and we talk about this all the time, what what diet tribe have you planted your flag in? Because not all meal prep companies are created equal. However, there are so many of them out there, they give you a lot of options to choose from. But the more restrictive you get in terms of the flag that you planted or the things that you can or won't eat, the more challenging this gets. Uh, now, so going back to the the eating just for fuel and I don't care. It's going to be chicken, broccoli and rice every meal. I don't care. I just don't want to cook it, but I'll eat it. Right. I don't have the time or the, the energy to do that. Well, meal prep companies have got smart about this and actually been like, well, we can do better than that. We can do better than just chicken, broccoli and rice. I mean, mm -hmm. we're talking chicken, we're talking a protein, a starch and a vegetable of some kind. And maybe we can do some cool things with some sauces or some, yeah, you know, yeah, some, some zazz it up a little some bit. spices and stuff. And they yeah. did a really good job at this stuff. Mm -hmm. So it just, it just got better and it's gotten better. However, I think you got to be careful about what you're getting yourself into there with regard to understanding what's going into your food. And I think some, mm -hmm. not, let's just, call, just say it this, not all meal prep companies are, are, uh, created equally. And they're, they are faced with challenges as a company, just like any other company is with regard to, all the things that go into managing, running, and uh, a, you know, a profitable or sustainable business, and as it relates to your food and what you're getting when you're looking at calories, macros, or whatever. To me, I care where that food comes from, mm -hmm. and you you're going to for as much con as you start to give up control of of your meal prep um, food and the food that you eat. You're going to have to give up some of that control with regard to maybe where it is or where it isn't yeah. isn't coming from. Yeah, kind of the level of precision that you're going to going to get, which uh, meant that made me think of when you st started talking about you know oh they started adding a little bit of sauces, started making it a little more you know a little more sexy than chicken broccoli rice. The more variables you add in terms of flavors and things like that, the less duplicatable 
the meal becomes. Great point. And then you are, okay, maybe the the sticker that they put on it says that these are the macros, but those macros could be totally off yep. because, you know, again, this is, these are humans that are probably prepping this, I would think. Um, they haven't been replaced by robots just yet. Not yet. But um, yeah, if, if, you know, it's very easy to duplicate and portion out chicken, broccoli, rice, you know, whatever, four ounce chicken, one cup broccoli, one cup rice. That's very easy to duplicate and be consistent with versus if we're adding sauces, if we're adding a little bit of this, a little bit of that, portion sizes start changing. It's, you know, you are giving up some control at the level of precision versus if you were doing it home and you know, okay, I knew exactly how much oil I used or right. whatever the case may be. So that's really, you know, it's up to what level of uh, control or precision you need or want. The, uh, th the need and want piece is really important because maybe that's not a big deal for you. You mm -hmm. just need to get, you know, relatively within it's in the ballpark, within a yeah. hundred calories, 150 calories a day. So mm -hmm. a little bit, you know, that was supposed to be an ounce of sauce. They maybe gave me an ounce and a half of sauce. Not a big deal, yeah. right? That's not going to kill me. It's not going to send me, you know, down mm -hmm. the, you know, in a, in a downward spiral or anything like that. But to your point, important, on, important to know that, that this kind of stuff the other thing is, is like when you're, when you're, you're, you go to these things and you start to, uh, you want variety. Some companies have done a much better job of this in terms of trying to provide variety for, and I don't mean like vegan, keto, you know, protein focused. Um, I don't know. I've seen some other things out the there. The bulk you, pack versus the lean pack. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Like yeah so something might be a little heavier in carbohydrate or fat, you know, versus protein, but you are still going to be limited. And so while it looks really good in week mm -hmm. one, <laughs> yeah. by the time you get to, and you've now you, you ordered your first 10 meals, let's say, right? You ordered 10 meals in week one. And I, I, you'd be challenged to find any meal prep companies that have more than 25 options total, right? They have a business to run, right? Yeah, they, you cannot customize this stuff. It's way too much to keep track of. This, they, they can't do that. They can't run a business that way. They They know, you know, they have to measure everything and understand what goes into each thing. That's not be duplicatable. They have, they have to be able to duplicate it. So if you had 25 options, you'd be, you'd be working with a company that's really reaching out there, but those aren't all going to be, those 25 options are not all going to be, you know, high protein or let's just say keto options mm -hmm. of those 25, 25 options. Maybe five of them are vegetarian or vegan. Mm -hmm. Five of them are keto. Five of them are, you know, um, gluten-free mm -hmm. and five of them are, you know, like a protein bodybuilder physique focus where you're, they're looking at more like 30, 40% protein, you know, equal fat and, you know, carbs. or uh, carbs and very low fat, that, that kind of thing. So in my 10 meals, I, if I don't eat vegan or vegetarian, well, you could take those five meals right out of it. Now I'm down to 15. Mm -hmm. My point of this is you order 10 meals for the week that leaves you five meals you haven't had yet guess what you're going to be doing? You're going to wind up eating the same foods. And mm -hmm. I think most people do that. They wind up with the four or five same meals every week anyway. Mm -hmm. You just have to be okay with that. So if you're a picky eater, if you're somebody that just cannot handle eating the same thing over and over again, mm -hmm. this might not be a good option for you. Or you're going to be <laughs> prep, prep company hopping, mm -hmm. right? Uh, yeah. a, a lot, which is, we all, we all know where that's going. Yeah. Right? Yeah. As far as, uh, what do you mean? As far as like, running into some yeah, crummy companies. Yeah, you're going to run into... So there's another thing with, with the companies. I mean, how many thing, how many times have these places started and finished? You know, no. very in the, rapidly. In the blink of an eye or, yeah, your, your well, buddy. Well, but then you're ta talking about trying to, to save on time or, or energy and then you're having to find another company and another company. Yep. I mean... That doesn't sound very efficient. Yeah, there are there are very successful companies out there. We're not, you know, we're not endorsed by or do we, nor do we endorse any of them. But um, you know, there's a few out there that do a, that have done a fairly good job. Ones that um, ones that are that pop out of my mind. I think that have been very consistent are like Factor, which is very popular. They yeah. do they do a ton of marketing, and I think that's why. The other one is uh, MegaFit, and I think so. Where Factor is kind of. A little bit more uh, mainstream, but also mm -hmm. focuses to, you know, the active um, and, and health conscious, um, you know, exerciser, if you will. I, I just think that that's kind of the market they're, they're looking, mm -hmm. looking into, but it could be for anybody. It's food, yeah. right? <laughs> um, but that's just who they're focused on where the mega fit really is focused more on like the physique 
kind of kind of genre. I mean, it has mega and fit. And yeah, come on. And I want to be mega. And, you know, they've fit. they've partnered with some of these major bodybuilders and physique competitors and things like that. So when you look at those two companies and you look at the actual meals, you will see a stark difference in what they're offering, right? Mm-hmm. And what I would say is like with me- with 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 uh, with Factor. You would see like what I just described, like there's 20 meals, there are 25 meals, there are different ones. I don't know if they have that many, um, but it's close to that. Rotate the menu as well. Every yeah, but not very often. Yeah. yeah. But yes, you have those. So you have all those different kind of like, again, um, eating styles that you could, you could order from. Um, and it's, it, it's, it's interesting. There's, there's like different sauces and, you know, there's pastas in there and there's, you know, Romesco sauce and there's all kinds of different stuff you'd see in there. That I was like, when I saw them and I've actually seen them, I haven't actually eaten them, but I've seen them in real life and I held them in my hands. I'm like, this is pretty good yeah, right? compared to some bad, of the meal prep yeah. stuff that I had before. Yeah. Right. And then you go over to like this other company, Megafit, where you look at it, it's, it, it doesn't look like that. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, five, five pieces of asparagus. It's white mm-hmm. rice with maybe a little bit of seasoning in it. Right. And, mm-hmm. uh, and then, you know, 56 grams of protein in your chicken serving. Yeah. Right, which has been grilled or whatever else. Um, now I'm not saying it's all like that, but there's a lot of chicken mm-hmm. on one side of that, you know, that that um, that spectrum versus the other, where they're trying to be a little bit more, you know, yeah, kind of open to a broader audience. Yeah. So again, meal prep companies have adapted this, and you got to got to go with what you want or what you what you need. But one of the things to consider is if you're a person that's very again looking at your macros and you're trying to eat that one gram per pound of body weight kind of thing. Well, protein costs money, costs mm-hmm. more than any of those other things. Mm-hmm. And so if you're going with more of the, of the protein focused or higher protein meals, you're going to pay more. Um, and I think that's an interesting thing is people going back to like what's right for you when you're choosing. People are looking at the, the cost of these meals and they're comparing like apples to oranges. In terms of making it themselves. Which is the interesting part about this because they're complaining, like, I don't have the time, you know, to do it. And, you know, my, I'm busy or I don't want to or whatever else. Yet they're complaining about the average cost per meal being like 12 to $15. I'm like, is that expensive? <laughs> I mean, I want the convenience and I want it to cost. Oh, I want it all. And I want it all right now. So, and I want to lose the weight be just because I ate the meals. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so comparing costs For without looking into the detail, <laughs> you know, from one meal prep company to another meal prep company, um, that's ridiculous. You, you can't do it though. You have to look at what's actually going into that and you're going to pay more for higher quality, higher density um, uh, food with regard to nutrient value. Uh, and, and I'm not saying there's no nutrient value in fat, but I'm not buying something that has 56 grams of fat in it, right? Yeah. Per meal. It's fluff. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Yeah. Um, if you're that person, then go find that meal prep company. You don't need to. That's easy. You could go to the, just drink some olive oil or something. <laughs> yeah, you can move get on that with your day. Yeah, spoonful of coconut oil. Yeah. But the point of this is, is like I see people freaking out, you know, and they're going, oh, that's a $15 meal. Uh, yeah, if you went out and ordered that, Especially here living in California, you're closer to 20 bucks. At least, (laughs) at least by the time you pay taxes. And and if you're talking about it getting and the mandatory, the mandatory cost of living fee and, you know, all (laughs) that stuff. Yeah, the fee fee, the breathing fee, standing fee. Yeah. yeah, If you're also getting it delivered to your house as well, like you you have to understand that there's logistics involved of getting that to your house, Mm -hmm. not spoiled. So, I mean, that if you're getting it delivered as well, then yeah, you're going to pay for that. You're going to pay extra. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense to me when I hear people go, oh my God, well, it's 12 bucks or it's 15 bucks a meal. I'm like, how much is the convenience worth to you? Yeah. Exactly. And yeah, you, so when you're ordering these things, they are coming like a, in a cardboard box lined with styrofoam, got the ice packs in there, uh, plus the food in there, plus the shipping, plus the, you know, the handling. Somebody had to put all that in a box. They had to get paid to do it. Like it wasn't one person in a kitchen making all these meals. There were many people. So again, there's things to, things to consider if you're going to go down this road, you will pay for those meals. And what is too much? Well, I can't, I can't say that you have to decide that, but at the same time, like if it, buys you back time and it gives you your life back in some way. How much do you value your time? Yeah. And it also puts the foods in the, in the, in the right ratios in front of you so that you can consume them in the way that you need to, in order to achieve your goals. That's an investment, right? And one way or another, you're going to have to invest. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's just where either in time or money, you're going to have to spend something. Yeah. So I, again, considerations is people are just looking at like, man, I need to eat better and I need this to be easy for me. I need it to, you know, I need it to be convenient. I don't have time. Okay, great. There's meal prep companies out there. 
but what is your plan? Right. And you need to, you need to have, you know, some sort of a plan to like, how does this meal prep company fit into the larger execution of my plan? Mm -hmm. Is it all of my meals? I would think twice about that. Yeah. You're going to get tired of that real quick. You you will get tired of that real quick. Is it some of my meals? Okay, great. Which ones? Mm -hmm. Is it seven days a week? Is it three days a week? Is it like on the days that my kids have soccer practice and Cub Scouts, right? And, you know, well, the one's got Cub Scouts, the other one's got soccer practice. I work, we're, we're running all Gotta over. Be in transit. That's yeah. on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, or Tuesdays and Thursdays. And so I need to, maybe you do it that way. That's one way to plug it in there. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that's way, one way to do it. Are you going, or do you travel regularly and you struggle when you travel to have meals available, you know, at the times that you need them? Maybe that's, that's something that you, 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 uh, you consider, um, but choosing the meal, I this just, I think this is the main point at the end of the day, no meal prep company is going to solve your, your, for your dietary success. It will not, you have to do that. And a meal prep company may be able to help you with it, but also understand, um, there are pros and cons that, that, that come along with those things. Um, I have had, I think meal prep companies have come a long way. If I was going to choose one now for me, just based on who I am and where I live, I would try and choose somebody locally, a small business local to me that I could help um, by providing business to, and they could help me, and that I could develop a relationship with. Mm-hmm. I have never met a, a local meal prep company that wasn't all about their customers. They wanted to know all because they're hustlers, man. It's oh, yeah. a tough business. I mean, oh, this yeah. is yeah. it's like running a restaurant. It's a 16-hour-a-day job a lot of times for these, these people. They got to rent a kitchen or they have to own a kitchen. They have to get in early. There's all the prep and cooking and cleanup mm-hmm. that you don't want to do. They're well, doing they're doing it. that for hundreds or, or, or more <laughs> people. So they and But they want to know. And they're usually uh, very much in front of their business. Um, and for those that were, and then pop, we had one here locally that was very much in front of their business. It was awesome. Every time we, and they actually had a storefront location and we went to this location. It was an experience every time we went in. It was kind of like going to Chipotle, like all the foods on their side. You could build 10 meals right there if you wanted to, right in front of you, or you could just go there for lunch or whatever. And when the, they, when he pulled out of there, right, and started trying to franchise things and that thing completely yeah. imploded. Mm-hmm. Um, and my point of this is, is like, I would go to a low, I stopped going there and we went to somewhere else. A guy that was in our business, like every day, like, Hey, taste my meals, mm-hmm. right? Hey, check these out. And they were good. And so we had those things here in the gym for a long time, uh, pre COVID point of that is, is like, I would go someplace local and you'll be surprised at how many local meal prep places you have that provide all this different kinds of foods, right? Like mm-hmm. culturally, um, mm-hmm. that you'll see some different things, you know, depending mm-hmm. on where you live, they're catering. All you got to do is like go into your Instagram and go hashtag meal prep, right? Mm-hmm. And hit a search and it's going to bring, I bet it brings up for uh, like a major metropolitan city like this. I just did it a few days ago, actually. I think it pulls up 10 places that are here just in San, San Jose, Santa Clara mm-hmm. uh, area. Yeah, just nearby. Yeah. They're, they're literally around the corner in some cases. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you DM them and whatever else, they're going to respond to you versus some of those bigger businesses, like I, like I mentioned before, and there's nothing wrong with those. I would just choose to go small business first, again, have that relationship, um, and, um, and, and, and try and support those folks. And then also maybe have some influence or autonomy over my food, right. Or, you know, influence on maybe what they try next. Hey, I really like this. Have you ever tried that? You know, Mm -hmm. because again, they're generally all about trying to make their customers happy and they're looking for feedback versus the larger companies is like, this is what we do. Yeah. They've, they've harnessed the power of the internet and that's working for them. Yeah. The, the duplication side of things is what they're most concerned with consistency and, and duplicating results versus the the local place. You know, yeah, there, it's going to be more personable, you know, because food is very personal. And so if you go into your local place, you know, there's, there's a connection, there's an inherent connection between like, this is where I get my food that, you know, that's like a personal private thing. So there, there's a connection that's formed. And you can go back and provide that direct feedback. Like, hey, Johnny, like th- that tri-tip was dry. It sucked. False. Um, yep. <laughs> let's, uh, you know, what will happen there? Where is somebody having an off day? You know, you could, you could have more that quality type, control. Yeah, you could have that type of relationship. Yeah. And I think more TLC gets put Yeah, I was going to say those smaller businesses, they need the recurring business in yeah. order to yeah, stay they, in they, business. They cherish it. Yeah. yeah. They, they do. There was another thing you just said there, which I'd, I'd forgotten to mention. And that is, um, there is one that's actually right over by where our old studio was. 
Um, they're just behind there. They they took over the kitchen. There was a bakery back there. They took it, and I, I forget what it's called, but I happen to know he takes a lot of pride in sourcing all of his stuff locally. So he's getting his foods from from other local businesses, and I think you know uh, we have to look out for one another there. I'm not saying don't get on the internet and order shit. I, I get it, um, but I think that's important um, to t- take care of small businesses as a small business owner. But again, having those relationships that they have, those roots run deep, right? So um, supporting the community, but also you know eating locally sourced foods. Maybe that's a good thing for you. Maybe it's not. I, <laughs> maybe you need to get it from somewhere. Maybe, maybe else. you yeah. need or want to get it from somewhere else. Um, but again, having some what of, yeah, that relationship I think is, is a cool thing. There's another thing kind of here. And I just, without getting too far on a tangent that I've, I know people have done and we've tried it. Like they get some of their foods from other places. Like they have like they get a delivery service for some of their main groceries or produce or things like that. And then they'll get like a meat company will deliver Mm -hmm. meat to their door and stuff like that. And then they, they, they prepare their own foods and whatever else. Um, this is where I have an issue with that. Like mine's more of a control issue and a preference issue. Like I'm old school. Um, like I like to go in and say like, I want that apple and I look at it and I put mm-hmm. it back if I don't like what I see mm-hmm. and I pick up the next apple. No, I, okay. That's a good apple. I put that Therefore, in my own bag. That's why you need to wash your vegetables right? and fruits. Right? <laughs> if I go to the meat counter, it's the guys behind the meat counter is which ones do you want today? I want those two up. I want the one up the front, that mm-hmm. one in the back. And they put, you know, they go yeah. through like this one. I'm like, Yep, that one. Mm-hmm. So when I get that meat and I put it on the grill or whatever I'm doing with it, like I pick that out. It's like, my selection. Yeah. It's my selection. And I had like the meat thing. We did the meat thing a couple times, and yeah. I was always the butcher box thing. So disappointed. Like, like I don't like cut sucks. Yeah. Like, what? Who did that? Like. I would not have picked this, like who picked this? And then sometimes like they don't have what you ordered. So they send you something else as like a consolation prize. Who wants a fucking consolation prize? Yeah. <laughs> like I want like what I ordered. So, and, and I, again, those are things versus going to the store. Um, You'll know if they're out. They're, yeah, I know. Like I didn't even have a choice. Like yeah. it wasn't there. So I had to make another choice. I need to be satisfied you with made the made an informed decision. I uh, made, otherwise, I made, yeah. yeah. Not the one Bob made for me in the packing room. You know, yeah, you, throw, yeah, throw that some kind of, of that in there. Yeah. So I've, I've seen that work well for people too. And you can do the same thing and source kind of locally and go to your local businesses for that. So that's one way. You know, you might not be doing like the the meal kits um, or the the meal prep, um, the ready to eat meal preps. Maybe you do it that way too. That's another option. Um, I, I I know a lot of people like they try to convince me, to, dude, you got to go to this guy. It's the best meat ever. Everybody's got a guy, and everybody has the best meat, and I'm sure they do. Just like I found my favorite store, you know, and I go and shop at. So, again, regardless, at the end of the day, I think the overarching thing on this is listen. Meal prep companies can be awesome, um, but I would not view them as the solution. I would look at them as part of a solution to your larger problem or challenge, whatever that is. And everybody's got the same one at the end of the day. We all got to eat. We all need a certain amount of calories. We're all trying to balance where those calories are coming from. We're all, at least the people at this table, are all trying to, to source that food, those calories, you know, those macros from the healthiest, richest, you know, most, you know, pristine resources that we can where, when we can. When it's available. When it's available. It's not reasonable to think that we're going to get it all the time, but we do our best to try and get it that way. So things to consider when you're looking into these companies, like where are they getting their food? Um, But again, like look at it as as a part of a solution. And I would start with like the least amount of what you think you can, you can manage by through meal prep or meal kits or meal delivery, and then build on it from there if you need to. Don't go... Like in terms of purchasing the minimum amount of yeah, meals versus start, going for the max yeah, 50 helipad. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> start a little bit at a time. Start like, I'll do two meals a day. So order 10 meals for this week, you know, my, my mid-morning and my afternoon meal, or maybe it's my lunch and my dinner or whatever else. Start with that, see how it goes. Um, see what you like, see what you don't like, you know, what, what tastes good, what doesn't taste good. Cause at the end of the day, that has to work. Right. Um, I would start there. I would not build your plan around, oh, well, I've found it. This yeah. is the right price. Right. They seem to have all the things I want for now. Right. Yeah. Until you've eaten the same thing 10 times. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, look at, look at it, look at it. Maybe, maybe take a few steps back before you do that. But, uh, you know, at, at the same time, there's some great companies out there, uh, that are doing a really good job. It's really good meal prep food before I, as good as it is, I couldn't eat it every day. Cece and I enjoy our variety. Like I, <laughs> and you know, the things that we do, sometimes it doesn't seem like that, but 
we mm-hmm. we can easily and quickly change it up and we understand like what our needs are. So uh, things to think about. I don't know if there's anything yeah. you want to add. I mean, I think that you brought up one thing, just one extra thing that I was thinking about when it comes to yeah, starting small with, you know, whatever, five to 10 meals, what I've run into or what I've been told in the past is, you know, someone, they, they have that, they have that sample meal, that showroom meal is that, that one really is great. And then they, you know, get the, <laughs> get the 30 pack or whatever. Um, and halfway through it, they're sick of it. And then they have, you know, $70 worth of meals that just go bad in their fridge. Um, because maybe, you know, they don't realize, you know, if I'm getting a week's worth of meals at a time by like day six, that six or seven day old meal mm-hmm. it might be getting kind of funky. Even yep. if you, and if you freeze it and then thaw it mm-hmm. for some people that Extra like for changes. me, that doesn't really jive. I don't really like doing that. Um, so if you even just keep it refrigerated, yeah, five, six days go by, it's starting to get kind of funky. Yeah. That's a really good point. Actually. I'm glad you brought that up. Like what, what, in terms of how it's delivered and how you receive it, uh, especially when you're first getting it to that point, because you might think you have a plan and then you realize like you put them all in the refrigerator when they arrived and then you get to the end of the week and you only ate half of them and then you're throwing stuff out. Mm-hmm. Some of these, so if you're getting them delivered and again, uh, I want to also make this point. Those local companies will deliver them to your door too. Mm-hmm. Uh, so those local local businesses, they will do that too in a lot of cases. Not all the time. Maybe you have to go pick them up. Maybe it's that's convenient. Not, yeah, there's a pickup location. Yeah. There's some place you can go that maybe they're delivering them to a gym, you know, yeah. or to another, some other they storefront, a supplement them, yeah, shop. Yeah, they used to deliver them to my supplement store. Yeah, we used to have them here. Yeah. People used to come pick them up here. Um, my point of this is is uh, the how they're packed and how you're receiving them. Um, some like the ones that are the online ones, the, ma- the big mail order ones, when you get them, they're going to be frozen. Mm-hmm. And, um, the, the, the practice that I think you want to look at is, is like, okay, how long do these take to, to thaw, pull them out throughout the week? If you're so lazy <laughs> that, <laughs> that you can't remember to pull, you know, Friday's meal out on Wednesday night, yeah. you know, <laughs> so that it's thawed in your refrigerator, I can't help you, but you're going to have trouble. Yeah. You're, you're going to have a lot of trouble, but once they're frozen like that, those things can be good in the freezer for like up to 60 days. But to your mm-hmm. point, like maybe may more in some cases, but if it's fresh food, probably not going to taste awesome after about two months, but yeah. that, that's a long time, right? Yeah. yeah. Meat. Yeah. Meat's definitely going to keep better as far as frozen. But right. yeah, if you get, you know, seven uh, of the, you know, little containers or whatever, and you're like, all right, well, buy day six or seven, let me put these in the freezer and the rice and the vegetables in there as well. And then you thaw that. For me, I don't like that. It's like soggy. It's kind of gross. You're right. So, But the meat, yeah. The meat for sure. And so when it comes frozen, get them in the freezer or only pull out what you need. And they're they're usually, once they're thawed, they might be good for Mm. like five. (laughs) Six six days, I'm throwing it out. Yeah. Yeah, Six days, I'm throwing it out. It's probably funky. Again, going back to your, your vegetables and things like that. So uh, again, uh, I think that's a good point. Like people don't understand, like, what am I getting into? They're, they they don't plan. Like they get this huge box of food. It shows up on their doorstep and they pull it inside and they start unpacking. They're like, holy shit, where am I going to put all this? They're making room for it in the refrigerator. It all goes in the refrigerator. And to your point, like by the end of the week, three or four of those meals are bad because you didn't get to them. Yeah. Your plan didn't go as, as planned or whatever else. So. Yeah, yeah. You thought that you were going to yeah eat those for every meal and realize like, oh, wait, I don't want to eat these for every meal. Yeah. Um, I, I over, I overextended on my order. So not downplaying meal prep at all. I think it's a good, it's a, it's a good thing for a lot of people. I don't think it's the answer for everyone as, as same as exercises and that kind of stuff. So, so go check it out. But I, I would say this, go check out your, your, your local places first. We did mention, look, you need a plan, right? So if if you don't understand what your needs are, like going and blindly spending money on meals just for the sake of having meals doesn't make a lot of sense. If you're going to go to the extent of doing this and researching and picking what meals work best for you, um, again, these are general, you're not going to be able to custom order. I want a 600 calorie meal. If you find a meal prep company that does 600 calories and the, the macros line out exactly the way you want, you got lucky. Take advantage while they're still in business. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But at the same time, like that, that might not be the case. And so you, you need to understand, you know, how to manage through a program, both in the short and the long term. And that, that starts with this higher level of awareness. Like how many, how many calories should I be eating for this first month versus the second month? Like, you know, where should I get started with this? Those kind of things. And then just get some guidance. Um, there's a couple different resources we have. Like if you're just looking for like calorie numbers and macro numbers, We've actually made that uber easy for you. You can go to rdfguides.com. We have our uh, our 
uh, calculate your TDEE or total mm-hmm. daily energy um, expenditure, which gets you in, which will get you started in terms of understanding how many calories you might need to kind of get started. And there's actually some macro adjustments that you can make there too to to get you um, kind of a, a a number that you should be maybe examining and where that fits in for you. A range, yeah, yeah. It's not perfect number, but it gets you in the ballpark. So it'll give you again, like maybe a, a a little bit better perspective of what you should be planning for. If you want to take it to the next level, then we have our online uh, nutrition coaching programs that you can go through with Stephen. That's very easy to get to. You, you to start with that, we just encourage people go to get a uh, an initial consult, and we offer we offer those consults for uh, they're, they're complimentary, they're free. So you can go to uh, rdftrainonline.com. Just hit the uh, nutrition coaching page, and um, you'll see you'll see that that area where you can sign up for a free consult, where you can meet with Stephen and just talk a little bit about what it is that you're doing now, where it is you're trying to go, and maybe we're the right fit for you, and maybe we're not. But you won't know until you call, and it won't cost you a dime. It doesn't cost you anything. <laughs> so check us out rdftrainonline.com. Just uh, hit that free consult. Um, a button there and it'll allow you to, to, to book a consult right there um, at, at a time that's convenient for you with Steven. Or you can pick up the call the phone and call us. Uh, I'll give you the number right now. If you're sitting in your car and you're listening and you want a quick want a quick uh, quick conversation, somebody here will be p- able to pick up the phone during our working hours. It's 408-242-9442. 408-242-9442. Call now.